If you want growth and returns, there is no better stock sector than tech. The technology companies in the S&P 500 have doubled the market return over the last five years, and it may just be getting started. In this video, I'll show you how to find the best tech stocks to buy, then reveal the top five stocks for your portfolio. We're talking top tech stocks to buy today on Let's Talk Money. Beat that. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. A special shout out to everyone in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. We're starting a great series of videos today, an idea straight out of a suggestion from one of you in the Bowtie Nation. Over 11 episodes, we're going to be looking at the best stocks to buy, but doing it in a way that's not only going to grow your portfolio, but protect it as well. Those of you in the nation have heard me say how important it is to pick stocks from each sector of the economy. So we're talking stocks from energy companies, tech, consumer goods, all 11 sectors. Too many investors get excited about one specific sector like that growth in tech or the dividends in consumer staples. They plow all their money into stocks in just a couple of sectors and get absolutely destroyed in the next bear market. So a lot of times you might not even realize it's happening until it's too late. You might be screening for dividend stocks to buy, you narrow your list and invest, but by virtue of limiting your picks to the top dividend stocks, you might also be limiting your portfolio to those sectors that pay the highest dividends. This is supremely important and I cannot believe we haven't covered this yet on the channel. Over these 11 episodes, one for each stock sector, I'm gonna show you how to pick the best of breed in each. We'll look at some of the big trends and, and how to pick stocks to buy. Then I'm gonna reveal five favorite stocks from each sector. Now understand you don't necessarily need all five stocks in all 11 sectors for a great portfolio. I'd recommend putting at least two or three stocks from each sector into, into your group, but I'm also gonna show you how to use a couple of exchange traded funds that you can buy to get that broad exposure to the sectors and then share a simple strategy that I use to get market returns plus a few extra percentage every single year. So let's get started because I'm excited to talk tech with you. If you're coming in later to the series, I'm gonna link in the first comment below this video to the most recent video. I'll also be linking in the video description all the videos in the series so you can see all the stocks for each sector. Now, if you're coming in later, uh, we'll link up those other videos in the series in that first comment. If you don't get go with any of these stocks in the sector, consider a position in one of these sector funds that we're going to talk about to get that exposure. So here's that graphic again of the stock sectors. And today we're going to be looking at tech, so including semiconductors, software, storage, even some of these internet companies. Picking these five tech stocks to buy, I screened for a lot of the fundamentals that we've talked about on the channel before. Now, I screened for companies with increasing revenue and cash flow over the last few years. With the economy growing, this was most companies, but it did screen out a few of the low losers with those downward trends. Now, another factor I looked at, and all of you in the Bowtie Nation are probably tired of hearing me talk about this one, is the operating margin. If there is one single factor you look for in picking stocks, it should be this one, the operating margin. Now, this is the operating income divided by the total sales for a company over any period, usually three months or a year. So if we look at an example income statement here for Apple, we see sales or revenue at the top with $259 billion. After the costs of goods or materials are taken out, the statement deducts the cost of running the company, these operating costs. Now what you get after removing the costs of running the business, that marketing, the administration, all of these costs, is the operating profit. This $64.4 billion for Apple here. This is the truest and best measure for a management's ability at creating a profit from the business. When you take that operating profit divided by the sales number, you get a profit percentage for how efficient and how effective the business is at running. Now, the pundits and the financial media love to talk about that bottom line earnings and the profit margin. Don't even think about it. The earnings include the effect of debt and financial leverage, as well as some of these accounting tricks on taxes. Analysts look at that operating margin as the real measure of management success. So when you compare that operating profitability across, across companies in the same sector or industry, you start to see some of the best run and those with a real competitive advantage. So I also screened for a positive dividend yield and this is one where a lot of tech investors are gonna disagree with me. As growth companies, a lot of these tech stocks aren't gonna be paying dividends. The company is still reinvesting every dime for that faster growth and that's fine. I just like a cash return on my investments. You know, I like that cash discipline on management from the dividend also. You know, management can't just throw cash at worthless acquisitions and low return projects because it has to meet that dividend every single quarter. But this is probably the one you can leave out if you like, and I made the exception on two of our tech stocks here in this list. 
you'll open up the list to all those companies that don't pay a dividend and you'll still find some solid investments. Now, beyond that fundamental analysis, when picking these tech stocks, I looked for companies with a real competitive advantage and catalysts for growth. The truth is that the market already knows a lot of these other fundamentals that we looked at, which companies have the faster revenue growth, which, uh, which have a higher operating margin, and all of that is mostly baked into the current price. It's these competitive advantages and those catalysts that offer the real opportunity for long-term returns. These are the companies with pricing advantages, brand advantages and strength, and upcoming events that are really gonna boost their stock price. So I'll share those five tech stocks that I found next, but first I wanna highlight three tech funds that you might also consider. If you can't find any stocks that you really like, so no stocks fit your screening criteria, you might consider putting some of your money into these funds just to get that broad exposure to tech investing. Then you can invest in stocks of those other sectors like we'll talk about in the series, but you still have some of that faster growth from tech. Now our first tech fund is the Technology Select Sector Spider, ticker XLK. This one's holds shares of 68 of the largest tech companies based in the United States and is pretty well diversified across all the separate industries. Companies in the fund have an average market cap of over half a trillion dollars, so we're talking about the largest leaders here like Microsoft, Apple, and Intel. The fund charges an expense ratio of just 0.13%, which is extremely low and pays a 1.25% dividend yield. Now, while that XLK will give you broad exposure across tech stocks, this next one is more focused in one of those big tech themes right now. The Global X Cloud Computing ETF, ticker CLOU, holds the shares of 36 companies offering cloud services and positioned to take advantage of that theme. Now, these companies are quite a bit smaller with an average size of just 100 billion and some are based outside the US, so you get some of that international exposure here as well. Now, understand that the expense ratio, that's the money that gets taken out of the assets each year to pay for portfolio management. That's 0.68% a year for this fund, so quite a bit higher, but the idea is that these stocks are gonna grow faster than the broader tech space that we saw in that earlier fund. Now, this last fund here, before we get to those five tech stocks to buy, is the Global X Internet of Things ETF, ticker SNSR. And this one invests in all those companies positioned to take advantage of Wi-Fi, 5G, and fiber optics. Now, this is going to be a huge trend over the next 10 years, but I feel like this one's a little less well-defined compared to, compared to maybe that cloud fund or other themes you'll, you'll invest in. Here you've got 50 companies spread across semiconductors, software, hardware, telecom, really across all of tech. Now these are smaller companies with an average market cap of just 26 billion, but these are still well-established companies. The fund is also on the expensive side with that 0.68% expense ratio, but, but could more than make up for it with growth. Even if you do invest in some of the tech stocks like the ones we'll highlight now, you might still consider putting some of your money in these funds. That's going to give you that opportunity for the higher returns from that individual stock pick, but also spread your money out a little bit across these hundreds of companies in these funds. Now, our first couple of tech stocks are going to come as no surprise and really bellwethers in the space. We start with Intel Corporation, ticker INTC, and its 2.24% dividend. Despite a really competitive market for semiconductors, Intel has been able to consistently beat expectations. For example, even with PC volumes down 10% on a year-over-year -year basis in that third quarter, the company reported sales that were $1.2 billion over earlier guidance. Now, a lot of the strength here was on higher sales price, with prices higher by 3 or 4% across all its products. And what this means to me is that even in a really competitive market, the power of Intel's brand and those competitive advantages that it's able to drive that kind of pricing power. Now, shares are trading at around 12 times earnings, which are expected flat over the next year, but you can see how management has consistently and easily beaten these expectations. The board of directors at Intel has increased the share buyback program to $20 billion a year over the next 18 months, so that's really going to drive earnings per share. Intel is going to benefit from both those cloud computing and the Internet of Things themes, and I think this is where that big upside surprise comes over the next several years. The average analyst price target on Intel is the widest we'll see in this tech stock group with a high of $70 and a low of $42 per share. Most of the analysts are grouped right around that $60 to $65 a share despite this range. And I think those shares could easily go north of $60 each on earnings around $4.98 per share, which is about 7% higher than expectations. Add that 9% price growth to the 2 plus percent dividend yield and you've easily got a double digit return here. Our next tech stock here is one of the biggest, Trillion Dollar Microsoft, ticker MSFT, and it's 1.4% dividend yield. Now Microsoft is quite a bit more expensive than I usually like to buy, but just got a huge boost with the Pentagon's $10 billion cloud computing contract. 
Now the company's Azure Cloud Platform was already its big growth driver, but the contract is absolutely huge. It's not even so much the size of the contract, but the fact that this is probably gonna open up a wave of federal and state cloud contracts for the company, none of which are priced into the shares yet. Now, of course, Amazon is gonna contest that Pentagon contract in courts and, and might have a decent case, but it's doubtful that this one gets overturned. The rumors are that President Trump sought to influence the Pentagon's decision because Amazon's, co Amazon's founder, Jeff Bezos, also owns the Washington Post. It's gonna to be tough to prove that, and even if there is some evidence here, I think Microsoft still comes out with this contract. Microsoft's cloud business also landed a $1.8 billion contract from the Department of Defense this year, and a $2 billion contract from AT&T, with CEO Nadella saying he has a line of sight on many more of these deals. The shares are expensive at 28 times earnings, but profits are expected to jump 10% over the next year. And just like Intel, you can see how management is consistently beating these expectations. Now, I actually think earnings could top $6 a share over the next year and just keep on going from there. Microsoft is one of the most widely followed tech stocks among analysts and price targets are really in a narrow range here. That lowest target of $155 a share is just 8% higher than the current price, while the top target of $170 per share is almost 20% higher. Now I did a video highlighting Microsoft in August with a buy recommendation. Uh, the shares are up over 8% from there, but I like that 160 to 170 range for the shares. Probably the biggest surprise pick and one nobody is watching is Logitech International, ticker LOGI. Now Logitech is a Swiss maker of computer and mobile accessories and I think could potentially be an acquisition target eventually. The company makes some of the most popular accessories in the industry. Now I've got two of their products on my desk right now, the Yeti microphone and the C920 webcam, which are pretty much the both de facto used by everyone in the blogging and podcasting space. You know, Logitech recently acquired Streamlabs, again, the standout leader in its space for video streaming. So here you've got a company leading in its product categories, growing sales and cash flows by double digits consistently, and has a pristine balance sheet with no debt and over half a billion dollars in cash. That's just a recipe for a larger player to come in and buy it out. The company is just under 7 billion market cap, so this would be an easy buy for so many other companies in the tech space. Shares are trading at just under 20 times earnings, which are expected 4% higher over the next four quarters, but this stock isn't widely covered by analysts. With solid consumption and gaming and other core products, I think earnings could come in at around 235 a share or higher easily on this one. Now we've got just three ranked analysts with targets on Logitech, so take this one with a grain of salt, but that low target is around $36 a share with a high target of 58 bucks a share. Now I like the growth potential on this one and there is a good chance that we see a big pop someday on a buyout offer. Now I've got two tech stocks that a lot of investors are gonna argue with, but I truly believe that these are some of the stocks of the future. The first one here is gonna be Alibaba Group, ticker BABA, which is kind of like the Amazon of China. Between all the sites owned by Alibaba, it has almost a monopoly control on Chinese online consumption, and it's using that massive data that it collects to become a data powerhouse as well. To give you an idea of scale here, just two of the company's retail platforms, Taibo and Tmall, generated upwards of $909 billion in merchandise sales last year. That's more than Amazon and eBay combined. Now, Alibaba is spreading globally much more effectively than Amazon has been able to do, especially across that Asia and Asia Pacific region. The company's cloud platform has a distinct advantage over Amazon's AWS or Microsoft's Azure in China. Now, shares of Alibaba trade for 28 times earnings. The, the data here is in Chinese yuan, so converted earnings are around 626 a share. But compare that to Amazon's stock price of 78 times earnings and Alibaba is a steal. Earnings are expected 19% higher over the next year and this one has decades of growth ahead of it. Alibaba is widely covered by analysts with a low target of $207 and a high of $250 per share for upwards of 42% return from the current price. Now this is a long-term must own in my book. So if you're bummed out about not being able to buy a single share of Amazon for, for $1,800 each, pick up Alibaba here and wait for it to reach that price. Now if Alibaba is the Amazon of China, then our next tech pick Baidu, ticker B-I-D-U, is the Google of the world's second largest economy. Now, I love these two Chinese plays here because they are the mere twins of Amazon and Google. Baidu don't dominate search traffic in China just like Google. It's also made investments in AI and self-driving, and it's got an online video platform just like YouTube. 
It's basically just copying one of the most successful business models in history and doing it in what could become the largest economy in the world. Now, shares of Baidu trade for 15.6 times earnings. And, and again, this is shown in Chinese yuan. Uh, and even though earnings are expected lower over the next year in, on some of these divestitures that the company's making, management has beaten expectations by a 37% on average over the last eight quarters. Again, take that winning business model, apply it to the Chinese growth story and get it for 15 times earnings versus a cost of 27 times earnings for shares of Google. I think this is another one that you can add to your long-term retirement plan and be very happy doing it. Analyst targets range from $108 per share on the low side to $181 a share over the next year and growth here is really over the next decade or better. Click on the video to the right for the latest update to our dividend portfolio challenge. And this group of dividend stocks is beating the market and producing a cash yield double what the index is paying. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.